Welcome to the State Hornet News. My name is Dominic Vidiello. And I'm Kimberly Gomez Sanchos. Here's the latest from the State Hornet Newsroom. Para las noticias en español, háganle click en la descripción abajo. Sacramento State Administration began sending email invitations to on-campus student workers to get their COVID-19 vaccine, according to Vice President of Student Affairs, Ed Mills. I spoke to some of these on-campus student workers about how they feel the university is handling the vaccination process and how they feel about being eligible to get the vaccine on campus. I feel, feel great, you know, it feels good to know that our, manager, our managers and my boss is actually looking out for all of us because we are frontline opening doors, sanitizing everything, making sure that everybody's safe. And it feels good to know that we're thought of. I feel comfortable because, you know, I have people in my life that are more prone to getting sicknesses. It was truly a huge relief for me to be able to receive that email that I'm eligible to get the vaccine. And um, it's obviously gave me a courage to be um, just outside the ca on the campus without uh, like fearing that I'm going to get infected by the virus. I feel a lot safer. Um, I feel safer before, but um, now that we got the vaccine, you know, it's just like another, you know, security, like a safe security for us, a layer of security for us. We deal with a lot of students, we deal with a lot of campus community. Um, so it's important for us to, you know, to reach the, that herd mentality. Uh, I was glad because, you know, I do work on campus and there are still um, classes being held. So it does feel like an extra barrier, extra protection. Like, I feel safer just in general. Um, there was never a point where I was, I was feeling unsafe on campus in terms of, you know, getting sick or anything, but it definitely helps. Sac State employees express their frustrations with the university after experiencing what they say is labor exploitation and discuss the extension of COVID-19 relief programs during a press conference hosted by Joint Labor Union Council. Multimedia reporter Allison Mayhew spoke with identity and diversity reporter Stephanie Nunez to learn more about some of these employees and their experiences with choosing between a paycheck or caring for their families. To hear this press conference um, be announced and, and hear the, sh the multiple stories from people who have been working there for more than 10 years, you know, um, it's kind of devastating to, to to learn that the university is lacking in that aspect of, of faculty and um, taking care of your staff. So I think it's important to continue amplifying these um, lower class uh, voices because that's really what we're facing is um, people who are, are having difficulty either with childcare or access to healthcare or balancing the pandemic um, and the demands and and aggressive and hostility of of this novelty virus and how much is demanding out of its university. Sac State's faculty senate discussed plans for a commencement, which will replace what would have been an in-person graduation in spring 2021. The commencement will mimic an in-person graduation ceremony, and students will have until April 1st at noon to register. Director of University Events Gladys Glad said that graduates will have three options for the commencement which will include the commencement, a virtual celebration with personalized graduation slides or just receiving the Hornet grad kit. Glad said students wanting to participate in the commencement who don't have a car should contact the commencement office so they can make accommodations. Sac State's Vision Center has closed permanently after a long closure due to COVID-19. The center closed in March 2020 alongside various other health services. However, unlike those other services, the center never reopened. Sac State's Vice President Ed Mills said the Vision Center closed due to a decreased amount of student usage over the years. I sat down with State Hornet reporter Emma Hall to talk more on the Vision Center closing. How is this going to affect students who need this service? So students um, who relied on the service who are historically low-income students and students of color no longer have access to these low cost eye exams and low cost glasses. When I was talking to students, they had mentioned, you know, for folks who did rely on the service, some of, you know, even the students I spoke to said it was a pretty great loss and that it was a pretty big hit for them. Um, when I spoke to students, they said eye exams cost around at least an average of $20 and glasses had cost an average of $79, which is drastically uh, less expensive than what is offered outside the university. 
Um, so not only do we see students losing accessibility to that, but we're also seeing that the university, you know, with optometry being a augmented service, no longer sees it as essential compared to in Sacramento County, we see optometry still open because it is deemed as essential. In the story, it talks about Ed Mills saying that he came out and said, it is an augmented service, like you said, and they decided to take it away, away due to less students going. But in the time that we are now, we are all, for the most part, virtual, looking at computer screens all day. How, how important is eye care now than ever? So the closure of less demand is actually something that's been argued a lot when I've been talking to students and been talking to folks who have been, uh, who worked in the center. Um, they're very strongly believe that it was not due to student decrease. One thing that kept coming up when I've been talking to folks is that it's always been booked and it's always been hard to get an appointment over at the vision center, over in the well. Um, one thing that was interesting that students had kept telling me was, you know, we're all kind of on our computers nowadays. I can't think of anyone who is doing school without an electronic device. And because we're all looking at screens constantly, there is a strong increase of, uh, of eye strain, of eye dryness. The women's basketball team pulled off its first Big Sky tournament win in five years and ended a four game losing streak during the first round of the conference tournament against the University of Montana. The Hornets were able to turn up the defensive pressure by scoring 17 points off of 15 turnovers. However, the victory was short-lived as their season came to an end against the Montana State Bobcats in round two of the tournament. The team went 3-22 this season. Beginning April 1st, Sac State will allow up to 100 attendees at outdoor ticketed sporting events, which includes baseball, softball, track and field, and soccer. These attendees will include family members of student athletes and coaches, and a limited number of Sac State students, faculty, and staff. When Sacramento County moves into the red, Sac State will consider allowing an increase to 20% capacity, which is roughly 4,200 viewers at the Hornet Stadium and 240 at the baseball field. The Sac State Valorant Green Team took home a 2-1 win against California State University Dominguez Hills last week. The first game was close at first, but the Green Team was able to win seven consecutive rounds after the 13th round, taking its first win. Green team member Nikki Aaron said that this game was a revenge match because Dominguez Hills took the championship away from them last season. Check out our daily swarm reports on statehornet.com where we recap all the results from that day's action in sports. The African Marketplace, which was founded in 2015 at the intersection of Florin and 24th Street by a local man named Brother Raw, has been a staple in the South Sacramento community long before the pandemic. Brother Raw wanted to focus on economics and African American history the market is open the first and third Saturday of every month. Not only is the market bringing a positive experience, but it's also sustainable. Here's an inside look at the African marketplace. Well, this market means to Sacramento a lot because it is the only African market so far I know. I've never seen another one like this, which brings all together the small African business people together. And, you know, we share ideas and the way of you doing businesses and advertising ourselves as small business people. The market is open to the public to shop and enjoy the atmosphere, but masks and social distancing are a requirement due to COVID-19. The African marketplace gives small businesses the opportunity to sell their merchandise and reconnect with the community. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the State Hornet News. My name is Kimberly Gomez Santos. And I'm Dominic Vidiello. As always, our coverage will continue on StateHornet.com. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time.